Hi, welcome to our CS8700 video presentation. Our topic is Starbucks in China. To start off, Starbucks coffee came into the Chinese market in 1999 and they have more than 2,600 outlets in 120 cities. They are looking to expand even further by means of integration. In 2007, Starbucks was forced to close its Beijing's Forbidden City outlet following nationalistic backlash from the Chinese public. Ironically, this outlet in the palace was opened in 2000 at the invitation of palace managers who needed to raise money to maintain the vast complex of villas and gardens. Another similar incident occurred in 2012 when Starbucks opened an outlet near the Hangzhou's Lingyin Temple or Temple of Souls Retreat. As it is a temple of historic significance and of Buddhist traditions, there is a disparity with having a highly commercialized and capitalistic store near the temple promoting abstinence from the excess life. The differing factor would be that the Starbucks outlet is not located within the temple itself, but a location 15 minutes away, placed together with a mall that has other western brands such as Kentucky Fried Chicken and many more. The store is currently still present despite some backlash following its opening, although the criticism did not reach the heights of the Forbidden City issue. In a country that prides its history, having a Western brand establishing its presence in the epitomes of the Chinese culture seems like a slight to the prowess of the Chinese, that the Chinese cannot produce beverages or businesses on par with Starbucks. Furthermore, the average cost of a Starbucks drink in Chinese is more expensive than in the USA. In this sense, the cost and the location seem to be exploiting the Chinese and their cultural heritage for the gain of a foreign entity. Starbucks was set to bring in their coffee culture to the tea culture of China, citing queries about their survival and ability to adapt to Chinese business environment. Furthermore, the core values and beliefs of Chinese differs greatly from the Americans and Europeans. The Chinese take the indirect confrontational approach by going through the anonymous online social media route to air their criticism which can easily gain traction and support from the rest of the nation. In the case of the Forbidden City branch, Starbucks was offered to become part of a combined outlet with other beverage brands, but the company refused as it was not in Starbucks custom to have other names for their store. They asserted the face of their brand by not compromising on the issue of the store and its location. However, they accommodated the request to leave China. For the Ling Yin Temple issue, Starbucks ignored the small-scale outcry as they were in their rights to open the branch at its location where it was not situated within the temple but in an area with a mall despite the close proximity of the temple. Since then, the company asserts their stand that they are respectful of China's long history and do not intend to encroach on the traditional Chinese culture but to encourage a coffee-drinking culture in the tea-drinking nation. Furthermore, they have hired Belinda Wong as the Chief Executive of Civil China, a Chinese who will be able to understand the nuances in China's business environment. The company has also embraced the collectivity culture by giving aid during major natural disasters within the country, providing training to improve the lives of Chinese youth and adopting new policies to aid employees and their families. Furthermore, they have adapted their marketing strategies, tapping onto the beliefs and ideology of the Chinese. What are the different perspectives of the parties in this case? Starbucks wants to tap into a new market to increase revenue. Because China has a population of 1.3 billion people, which is the largest in the world, this would mean a significant increase in profits should Starbucks capture a portion of the market share. However, Chinese people feel differently. The Chinese people come from a predominantly tea drinking culture. and they find that coffee is expensive and bitter. In the year 2007, Starbucks was, close, was forced to close down at its outlet in the Forbidden City in Beijing. The outlet undermined the Forbidden City's solemnity and trampled over Chinese culture. From this, we can observe that Chinese people are ethnocentric in nature. They are proud of their Chinese heritage and view Starbucks as a foreign element. And in order for Starbucks to successfully expand into the Chinese market, Starbucks has to adapt its business plan to cater for the Chinese culture. However, in present-day China, many young Chinese view Starbucks as a symbol of status. This shows that as the Chinese market becomes more open and connected to the global economy, the Chinese people are becoming more open and accepting of foreign brands like Starbucks.
One of the main reasons why Starbucks is successful till this very day is because of its unique low power distance culture that they adopt. In Starbucks, they identify themselves as partners because they believe in working as a team and never leave anyone out. This culture is also illustrated in one of Starbucks' mission statement, which is creating a culture of warmth and belonging where everyone is welcome. The Chinese culture is considered to be characterized by high power distance, on the other hand. The history of the Chinese culture goes way back to the Confucian era, which believes that societal harmony can be attained through respect to age and social hierarchy. There is also a difference in the uncertainty avoidance in both Starbucks and China. In Starbucks, the company adopts high uncertainty avoidance. This is evident in their mission statement of acting with courage, challenging the status quo, and finding new ways to grow our company and each other. The partners are constantly encouraged to ask questions and go beyond the norm to show innovativeness and engagement. This is, however, very different from the Chinese culture. The Chinese students were noted to avoid objecting opposing views of a certain matter given by someone else in a group because it is important to them that the harmony is always kept and there is balance in the learning environment. Not everything about Starbucks or Chinese culture is different. They do have similarities in them as well, one of which is the idea of collectivism. In Starbucks, despite having many stores worldwide, they are all managed by the core team in the United States. As for the Chinese, most of the people act in the interest of the group or an organization, and less of themselves. There are many cultural factors that contribute to the issue here, one of which is the family values. One perception of the Chinese parents is that they will do whatever it takes to ensure that their child succeed in many different areas, be it work, education, or relationship. In addition, the Chinese believe that coffee means nothing to them. Coffees are shunned by the majority of the Chinese and is believed to cause heatiness in the body, unlike teas, which are so much of a part of the tradition and culture. The Chinese say that the practice of tea helps them in both spiritually and wisdom. These are the strategies that can resolve the issue step by step. Firstly, Starbucks need to model their shops to adhere to China's traditional value. They need to place their shops in locations that are neutral such as malls. Secondly, to promote the culture of coffee drinking and the many benefits it brings, such as lowering risk of Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's. Thirdly, is to show transparency in the rise of cost of coffee in the country. This is to show that the rise in cost of coffee is actually justified with the increase in area. Also, using cost concepts for possible resolution, one of the cost concepts is that culture is actually like an iceberg. There are two components and only about 10% of culture is easily visible and the other 90 is hidden. Understanding and discovering this hidden culture is a crucial step to success. This is often known as objective culture. Also, Chinese have a very, very collective mindset, which means to say, Starbucks need to ensure that their workers have many benef health benefits and housing grants to promote their brand better and also ensure that their employees work better 